Today's session is based on the fundamentals of attack play. I believe that the difference between the best players in the world and the rest is their ability to perform the basic skills under intense pressure. So today's session is going through what that means, the key skills for backline players. Right, as we're building towards full backline attacks, one main thing that we have to get right is a realignment during the game. We have to generate that pace we've saw, saw is so important as a first receiver. We've got to generate that the whole way through the back line, especially the further you go along the back line. So in a game, you can't always be in the right depth. When the ball's slow, any turnover ball, counter-attack, you're going to work back, work to go backwards as much as going forwards in the game. So this is what this next drill is going to be about. It's going back to then go forward and be an effective back line attacker. I'm just going to demonstrate what we're all going to be doing. As you see, there's cones up in front for four of the back line. Speed as you run towards that, that red pad, the back line players are going to drop back. So you go forward, this is what I mean. Suddenly I go back, my hands are up, I've got on my toes, look in the scan, He's, you'll go back to the ball, run forward, should be catching it where, where, where you were at the beginning, but get that sensation of going back, being ready for it and attacking the ball. We all understand? Good. Okay, first four up, please. There's no set of rules, but the best way for me is to, to get back inside and then work to get your width. So work hard to get back straight away and then you're getting your right width, you're on your toes, and then you can attack the ball. If we're too tight, then our first movement will be to drift. We want to be attacking that pass. Okay, let's see if we can get that ball across the bat line before we get over the halfway. Off we go. Good start. What would make your life easier as a scrum half? If you've got your back turned to your, your 10, you're digging that ball out. Talking. Same for the players outside. Let's really be loud. Comes from the first receiver, clapping his hand, saying, yeah, I'm here, hit me. Use his name. Then he knows he can get that pass right in front of you. Keep working on that grab. It's trickier in these weather conditions, but it's very important we'll get that decisive catch. Good depth. Players, especially in that outside centre, wing position, you can hold your timing. You don't have to run at the same time, so you get maximum pace out there. Okay, same thing of the left hand. Let's make sure we've got the accuracy. I want to hear you. As you get back to that cone, that should be the trigger. I'm back in position, then I'm going to tell the person inside me I'm there. Off we go. Nice, good talking, nice catch. Yeah, it's funny, um, the game of rugby is about going forward. That is a, is a key fundamental of the game. We'll have to go forward if we're going to score tries, if we're going to get in behind the opposition. But a lot for a backline player is going backwards. It's getting yourself out off the tackle, working hard to get in the line. Any kicks that go in, any turnovers, You've got to be in the right depth to make yourself at full pace to be an effective uh, attacker. So this drill just gets them going back, realigning, and also that's a trigger for them to talk to each other and say they're there, and at last we can hear in the background some noise, they're calling for the ball, and get it right down that back line. Okay, I'll need four up, working off the right, four off the left, which means... Uh, one person will uh, step out. Really think about the depth here because you, you'll be coming together against another bat line. So the two players on the outside channels waiting, holding, then really full pace when you get that last pass. Go! Good. Okay, let's go. Nice. 
guys. We'll do the same thing, but it, the team working off the right hand will go through first. And once they pass and scrum half, you go. And we'll do that. So just get your timing of the scrum half each time. Okay. Good. Well, I agree. Very good depth. Every time you're putting pace on that side, it's good timing. Okay, we'll do one more each group, and I want to see the, the wingers at full pace if they can. What might you need to do to get to full pace? Hold your depth, just wait a little bit more, or even get further, further deeper, like ignore the cone. You might even have to go another five yards to get to top pace. Let's see if we can do it. We'll start with this group. Well done. Good pace. Well done, guys. Start tighter as he goes forward. You've got to find your own depth, your own width. See if we can still get that same pace. Even a bit flat, a bit flatter as well. So this could be transition attack or suddenly it's slow ball and the ball comes out. You've got to work to get back. Off we go. Well done. Next part is about getting gain line. Getting over that gain line when the defence is, is aggressive. You, you can't beat them on the outside. So we're going to have uh, two defenders up against three attackers and it's going to be the, the weak defender which will be me at the beginning will either choose to come on the second receiver or the third receiver so as an attacker you've got to choose whether to give that missed ball on the gain line or the short ball by having what's called split vision being able to stay square fix the man opposite you but looking also on the outside whether I'm going out in the defense or going in as soon as I turn my shoulders either way that's when the decisive pass is given so gain line drill, if we just if we get our width, so you two guys are quite, quite close together, but wide enough from the 10. If you imagine the hole is either going to be just inside me or outside me. So in a game, we'd have another defender just outside you, and you're, you're reading what I'm doing. If I start to move like that, where's the ball going to go? Short ball. I'm going in here, straight across. And in a game... It won't be big spaces you'll see. It might be just a little hole. It might be a weak defender. So that's why we're not going to go too far out wide and it'd be very easy for the attack to beat me. So you're going to... Let's take it back five yards. You're going to move on the ball. Fix that defender. As soon as you see what I'm doing, trust, trust your instincts and go through that pass. Off we go. Good start. One from one. Easy one for you. Still beat me. Okay, there's less space. Let's see a bit more uh, committed running from the 12 and the 13. So if you've got that depth to begin with, you'll be running hard, and that ball's going to be given in the gain line. Good. 10, it's your responsibility. You've got the back line organized to begin with. Both your centers are there. Centers, I want to see us running hard, really committing us in defense. Need you up flat out, hitting that ball at pace. It's all right, you're decisive, made your decision early. Good. Good. Let's have a couple more. Nice. Okay, so it's a bit more realistic. It's a man-on-man -man defense. They're coming up. 
You've got to be running committed, trying to get inside shoulder or outside shoulder this defender. I want you to be reading him. If he comes up and does that, target his inside shoulder. You'll be with your split vision, see he's starting to drift and give the ball. If he goes in, give that ball to you and you're cutting inside this last defender. So both of you must be running hard. We might just get an arm in a game, but that arm means that we'll get a half, half break, hopefully an offload as the support runners are there, and that turns into a line break. Okay. It's all right? Just to get the timing, scrum half's just going to come in from a couple of yards. Okay. Nice. First receiver, if we can really get that ball through our hands quick. If we hold on to the ball for any more than a couple of seconds, then our options are cut down. Nice. What do you want from your uh, from your first receiver there? Catch the ball. G give it, giving it early as well. I think um, if he takes it right to the gain line and holds on to that ball for too long, then the options are gone. We've got to get that decisive catch. And then already as we're moving on to it, we should be getting our eye on that second defender. If he's starting to drift, give the ball. You've got two big runners outside, you're running hard on the ball. If you take it too far, they're going to be smashed. Hospital pass. So let's think about it. Maybe just take another couple of yards of depth. We will fix that defender. Are running before we get the ball. So if you're really running onto it, you fix them. Then just let that ball go through our hands. Off we go. Good. In the game of rugby, a lot of it is about playing on the game line. It's about finding little holes between defenders, not necessarily getting outside the whole time. So we've got to get our timing right. We've got to have something called split vision. The fact that first receiver, I can catch a ball, fix you with my running before I get the ball, but also have an eye on what's happening outside me. Any weak shoulder, any drift, then I know the short ball's on. Any uh, Anytime someone's standing, coming in, that second defender, I give that ball straight across. Sometimes it's difficult for, for players to, to adapt to that, having played against no defence, and then suddenly moving forward when defenders do different things, but that's the game of rugby. You've got to be playing against defenders the whole time, and finding ways that you can get your team going forward. Good. One thing, uh, when you're given a short ball, do you think uh, it should be a, a spin pass? Hot pass. Or sympathetic pass. It's good. You, pop pass can be right. Well, what I mean by pop is just a wrist pass. It's not a pop up in the air. Or a, a spin pass that's sympathetic. But as long as that short ball isn't firing across, that man is bouncing off his chest. So make sure that we get that catch right and then it just might be a simple wrist pass. There's one other play I wanted to look at um, about getting to the gain line and having two options and that's uh, what we call a decoy attack. Two wave of attack where uh, the first runner is coming hard onto the ball and someone, usually a, a winger, it can be a, a centre, is coming in behind. So to, if you get the technique right here as a back line, it can be very effective. You've seen it in, in rugby league, you've seen it in, in rugby union. Teams that have these two option attacks, if the first receiver picks it right, it's very hard to defend. So that's what we're going to work on now. Again, it's going to be a, a three on two. The triangle formation of that, that decoy attack. Two defenders, I'm going to be the, the weak defender or the strong defender. And you're reading me again. Very similar to what we did there with the short ball, the wide ball. If I was to open up my shoulders, where would you give the pass? Um, short ball runner. Short ball runner, yeah. I step in on that, that block runner, that decoy runner. The ball goes in behind. So I'm going to be uh, quite prescriptive with your running lines here for the decoy plays because we have, we have to get this right. So as you see, we've got the uh, first receiver and the second receiver in the white cone. I want to have the, the decoy player, the winger, on that red cone. And the timing's very important. If, if I'm the second defender... What do you think will it put, um, put me under pressure? Late movement or real early movement from the um, player in behind? Late movement. That's the key. If I see two players coming into my same zone and the pass can either go to the player coming short or outside, I'm under a lot of pressure. I have to make a decision. And that's for you to see at first receiver. You're coming to come at me, I'm going in, then the ball goes in behind. 
We're going to try it through and then we'll, we'll see if there's any adjustments to make. But really what we're looking for is two different running lines. From the player outside, running straight, last minute he's coming in to move me as a defender. If I go with him, the ball goes in behind. If I stay outside because I can see you, the danger man, coming in behind, you give the short ball. Similar from in behind. I want you to start straight and just as he's coming in, you go out. And that's when the pass goes. Be really effective because there's two options. I see a lot of teams doing this move and 90% they, li they like to play the ball at the back to the, the player in behind. But if the defender reads that, you're going to be tackled by the gain line. If you're indecisive or it's already, if you don't know what, what I'm doing as a defender, give it to the player that's coming hard onto the ball and you know he's going to get to the gain line. One thing, just one we've, uh, we've looked at at the beginning, leave the run as late as possible. Someone mentioned it. So as that player in behind, you leave your run late as possible. It'll make it much easier for the, for the ball to come from first receiver to you because he can see you. If you go too early, then all he's going to see is you in the same line as the centre and he won't be able to put the ball in behind. Nice. Good ball. Okay. Just that last one there. Just the point I was making, if you, if you go too early, if you get the ball to 10, I go too early, you're going to find it hard to get that ball in there. So late, late as possible as you're going in, I'm still here as an option. And as you pass, that's when we cross. Player in behind, just leave your run slightly later. Okay, keep him coming through. See, that's what I mean. Two, two players going too early, and we can't get that ball in behind. Good. First receivers really commit the defender. Good, good option. Nice. Okay, let's just bring it in. Okay, from that session, we looked at doing a decoy play and making sure we get the technical aspects right. So if you're running that, that decoy, that block runner, well, what are the key points you need to do? Just delay your run. Delay your run. Just to pressure the defender, if you want to mind. Yeah. And you, you've got to run for real as well. I think uh, a few times there we thought with a decoy the ball was always going to go in behind us and we dropped our hands. If the best attacks in rugby are those that have got two options and you've got to remember each play is live. It's a first receiver that decides. So if I'm a defender deciding to go somewhere else, run expecting that ball. And in behind what we learned is that late run change of movement is more effective, not just for the pass because the 10 can then see you, but also as a defender, I'm under a lot of pressure the later you run. If you run really early, the defender outside me can cut you off. So just take that. We're going to do the final part of the session, which is playing against different defences. Think about those plays that have got two options and which one would work. The last drill we're doing is decision-making against different defences. As you'll see out of the back, we've got three different coloured cones. So the, the light green cones are simulating a drift defence. They're quite narrow. They're going to work hard together to, to, get, to cut down that space on the outside. Orange cones, normal defence. So you can play against them like a normal, spaced out, man-on-man -man in defence. The final ones, the blue cones, are wider. They are, they're going to be coming up very hard at blitz defence. So you've got to look at the best options of playing against them. So against a drift defence, what are we looking to do? What's the best way to get past the drift defence? Uh, probably have uh, someone coming back on the angle to hold them drifting. Yep. So if you just keep shifting it, they're just going to keep drifting off you. Yep. Absolutely. And one key for me is to, to get outside that defence to begin with. So it's, it's getting the width. If we are narrow, that's what a drift defence wants to see. They're going to push you across the field. And something right at the beginning we did, we talked about missed passes. A, miss, a drift defence loves a missed pass. That means that if you put that missed pass, they can work together and get there. What they don't want to do is to be committed. So take that defence on any way you want. First receiver, that might be going at it. People coming back at angles. Make sure that they put the tackles in and you can get in behind them. What about a blitz defence, a wider space blitz defence? Where's, where's the chances of beating that? In behind. In behind? 
we we'll through a kicking game. Maybe a little grubber. Yeah, a grubber kick. Yeah. Or what about the fact ball. that they are they are they're a bit wider? Through the gaps like a short ball. Yeah. Or you could hit like centre down on a short ball off twelve. Yeah. Let's look at getting in between that. They're gonna put your, your skills under a lot more pressure because they're coming up quick. But we've got to get in in behind there or through that defence. And finally, the man on man defence, it's what we've been working working on already. Those decoy plays, short balls, just taking taking on that defence. But remember the things we've built up today about first receiver attacking that line, getting the passes on the gain line, then we'll get that team moving forward. <laughs> Okay, remember get enough depth. Let's go again. Remember that work to get deep enough. Remember the second whistle. Good. Someone's got to take on that drift defence. Any line breaks with support. And good talk. We'll do one more for that group. Good. Well done, just hold your depth out there so you're effective. You have space in behind against that blue defence. Let's talk to him outside. He might be on for a little chip through. Just one observation. You remember that drill we did about the realignment? Going back to go forward. Do you think we're uh, getting far enough back? Ten, you're, you're, it's your job as well to get that back line. Nice and deep, so they're they're putting a bit of pace. We we'll look like we're pretty flat out there. Well, let's do a let's do a blue. But um, when you're coming up, come really fast, but come in. So you 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 might be standing outside the second man, but come in like you're you're cutting them off and see what they do. Yeah. Second one's done. Good pace, well done. Well, I want to firstly thank you guys for your efforts today. We covered a lot through those sessions. We looked at the fundamentals of, uh, of attack and play. How to be a, a successful backline and getting your realignment. And finally, decision making against different defences and what plays you might put on against different defences. What about the, the time we went over and looked at realignment? The key's there. Just to hold your depth and like realign closer and then space out. Yeah. And also thinking about going backwards. You, in, a, in a game of rugby, we go backwards as much as going forwards, especially the backs. So at the end there, we I think we, we forgot a little bit at the beginning that we have to go backwards to get the pace on the ball. And uh, anywhere on the field, think about that. Getting your timing and your pace so you can really bust defences. And finally, we, uh, we looked at that, that scanning, the ability to, to have the ball staying square but seeing what the defenders are doing. So we, we took on that drift defence and the blitz defence. Again, remind me what, uh, what are the keys against a, a drift defence. Oh, either someone like penetrating the line or just use all the hands. I don't think the skip pass isn't really on because they can uh, they just like drifting on that. Yeah. And even I think we against a drift defence you can challenge that line even more so get a bit flatter. So you're fixing the deeper you are, the more that they can get outside you and, and shut you down. They that's what they want. They want time because they've got less numbers in defence. The opposite in some ways with the blitz defence, what's what's the options for us there? Uh, you got a bit of space in behind, so you can maybe look for that grubber or look for players making a running line, either in or bouncing out. Yeah. And uh, what we didn't cover, but what's something else for you to remember is 
is two waves attacks, two waves of attack. They're very, very effective against blitz defense. They, they want to see men in front of them so they can, they can hit you. But there's space in between them for those blindside wingers coming short, whether on decoy plays or just defend it coming off a, off a shoulder. So all of that is uh, stuff you, you need to work on, especially those fundamentals, catching the ball, running onto the ball and passing. The more you practice that under pressure, the more effective you'll be. The key point for me for, for coaches is to make sure that the players train under pressure. So those technical points have to be made either in games or putting defenders up. And today's session when you we did see defence being in there, it was tougher for the players. But that's what they've got to get used to and that's what makes a good rugby player.